My name is Lauren Spakar with Oregon State University at the Eastern Oregon Agricultural Research Center. In this video, we're going to look at the Great Basin region of the Western United States. We'll discuss a little bit of the history, ecology, and major issues that are arising with land management. The Great Basin is most commonly defined by its hydrology. The area is an internally draining basin that formed geologically about 24 to 1.8 million years ago. Approximately 1.8 million to 12,000 years ago, climatic and biologic changes started taking place, such as the formation of massive pluvial lakes, including Lake Lahontan and Lake Bonneville. The existence of these lakes can be seen today in exposed shoreline terraces. The landscape that has resulted from these historic periods is a basin and range complex. Desolate salt pans are also scattered throughout the Great Basin and include the Bonneville Salt Flat. Lake Bonneville historically covered 20,000 square miles, which is approximately the size of Lake Michigan. It also reached a depth of about 1,000 feet. Remnants of Lake Bonneville currently include the Bonneville Salt Flats, which we're standing at here, and the Great Salt Lake. What happens is water drains into the basin and then evaporates off with the high temperatures of spring and summer, leaving a salt crust and high saline conditions. Bonneville salt flats are managed by the Bureau of Land Management and they are internationally known for the Bonneville Speedway, where the first land speed record was set in 1914. Soils in the Great Basin range from very sandy to very clay, depending on landscape position, geology, and catastrophic events such as historic flooding or volcanic eruptions. The soils tend to be either alkaline, calcareous, or neutral, and include the soil orders of mollusol, andesol, and eritosol. Vegetation composition is dependent upon site and disturbance history and is comprised of grassland, sagebrush steppe, salt desert shrubland, and juniper pinion savanna and woodland.
The salt desert shrublands occur in saline desert basins, alluvial slopes, and plains. Species that occur here are shrubs and half shrubs of the Chinopidaceae family, including four wing saltbrush and winter fat. Much of the Great Basin consists of sagebrush steppe, which is a mix of wildflowers, grasses, and shrubs. At the higher elevations, mountain big sagebrush dominates, while at the lower elevations, Wyoming big sagebrush is the dominant shrub species. There are many other species of shrub, but they occupy much less area than these two major types. Generally speaking, mountain big sagebrush recover well after disturbances such as fire, whereas there tends to be more risk of invasive species such as cheatgrass at lower elevations. The pinyon juniper complex, commonly referred to as PJ, is comprised of various juniper species and pinyon pine. It grades from savanna to woodland, which is 25 to 60 percent canopy cover. Reduction in fires through human activity has influenced vegetation. For example, species with historic ranges determined by fires, such as western juniper, begin to encroach into other plant communities. Juniper encroachment in the landscape poses many serious consequences, such as drastically increased soil erosion rates due to snowmelt and rain runoff. Historically, juniper persisted along the ridge tops of high elevation ranges. One of the major issues facing the Great Basin today is the spread of exotic annual grasses, specifically medusa head and cheatgrass. These species have invaded large expanses of the basins, predominantly in lower elevations. They increase fire frequency from one every 25 to 50 years to one every 5 to 10 years. Increased fire frequency provides an advantage for these highly competitive species and turns land into a monoculture, which poses a suite of environmental threats, including loss of biodiversity. The Great Basin is the largest contiguous expanse of rangelands in the United States, and people throughout the region are working on novel practices for maintaining its ecological integrity. The Great Basin supports a variety of agricultural practices including ranching and forage production. It is also home to a variety of wildlife species including deer, coyote, and sage grouse. I hope you've enjoyed this video and someday have the chance to explore this wonderful region that we call home. Thanks for watching.